Hi, I'm Steve Halliday, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to wire up the sensors to your Arduino Autonomous Vehicle. The two sensors that we'll be wiring up will be the proximity sensor, and then also the phototransistor that we'll use for detecting the line on the floor. Here's an image of the proximity sensor, along with the plug that we stick into the socket on the proximity sensor. You'll see that the plug has a red wire, a black wire, and a yellow wire. The red and black wires are used to power the sensor, and then the yellow wire is where we read the values from the sensor. We'll use this image to represent a schematic version of the socket for the proximity sensor. And you'll see here that I've labeled the wires with the 5V meaning 5 volts for the red wire, the ground being the black wire, and the yellow wire hooks to pin 1 on the motor shield board. I'll show you how we're going to do that. This is an image of the motor shield card. It isn't fully populated with all the connectors, but we'll use it to orient ourselves anyway. You may recall in the previous video we talked about how these two holes down here, which actually are populated with a little two lead connector, these are the holes that we'll use to power the motors controlled by the motor shield with the positive lead on the left you can see the little plus sign on the left there, and then the ground on the right for the motor power. These are the leads that will connect to the three volt and a half batteries that we have that are in the battery compartment of the car itself. On the left, you'll see the connectors for the DC motors that will drive with the motor shield, and we'll talk about how we'll connect those up a little bit later. Down here in the bottom, you'll notice that there's a V in and a ground. These two holes are actually controlled by pins that come up from the Arduino and they power the electronics for the board. Over to the right of the V in and the ground you'll see the analog pins. These pins are labeled 0 through 5 and these analog pins can be used to control or to read values from analog devices. Now a couple of these pins we can't use because they're actually used to control the motor shield through the I2C type of protocol, but we'll be using pins 0 and 1 from the board here to read our two sensors. These holes up here aren't connected to anything, but we'll use them almost as if it were a breadboard to lay out our resistors and to connect some wiring. And you can see up here, here's where the servos go. The first thing we will do is run a couple of wires to our breadboard area. We'll run a red wire from this hole down here labeled 5 volts up to the breadboard and then another wire from the ground up to the breadboard. We'll use these wires to power our sensors and the electronics that we're going to build in this breadboard area here. This is how we'll connect up the plug for the proximity sensor. You'll see here that we take the red wire from the proximity sensor and we'll solder it into the hole just next to the red wire from the 5 volt connector that we just put in a second ago. And then we'll similarly run the black wire from the proximity sensor right next to the ground wire that we soldered in a second ago. And then finally we'll take the yellow wire or some, some of the proximity sensors actually use a white wire here, but we'll take this third wire and we'll run it to pin 1 in the analog pins down here. This will allow us to power the proximity sensor and then also read the value from the proximity sensor on pin 1 in the analog pins. Then on the bottom side of the motor shield, we'll connect the red wire from the proximity sensor to the red wire from the 5 volt power supply we'll do this, I've tried to note this with just these little gray lines here, but you can do that with just a, a little piece of uninsulated wire. Similarly, we can connect the black wire from the proximity sensor to the ground wire coming up from the uh, ground of the power supply as well. And that completes that circuit. Now you're ready to read from the proximity sensor. Now let's talk about the phototransistor, or the sensor that we'll use to detect the line on the floor. What I'm showing here in this image is a close-up of this photosensor of the bottom part, let's say the, the part of the sensor that faces the ground. 
And this sensor actually consists of two separate devices. On the top is a little light that emits the, the light that the sensor will detect. The light bounces off the floor and it bounces off a lighter surface better than it bounces off a dark surface. The bottom half of the device is actually the sensor itself that detects the light. So what we'll need to do is power the top light part of this, of this sensor and then also power the detection mechanism on the bottom part and I'll show you how we're going to do that. Here are a couple of resistors that we'll use to connect up the phototransistor. The top resistor you'll see that it has bands that are green, blue, and red. This indicates that this resistor is a 5.6 kilo ohm resistor. The bottom resistor has bands that are red, black, and brown. This is a 200 ohm resistor and I'll show you how we're going to hook these up to the phototransistor. Here's a schematic showing how to wire up the phototransistor. You'll notice that these two wires in the corners, on opposite corners, are ground wires and so we can connect both of those together and then connect that to the ground. On the top right is the power for the lamp. We'll need to run that through the 200 ohm resistor and then run that to a 5 volt power supply. And then in the bottom left is the wire that we'll use to read the sensor. We'll also hook that up through the 5.6 kilo ohm resistor to the 5 volt power supply as well. And then the other lead off of that will hook to pin zero in our analog pins on the uh, motor shield. Here's what the motor shield will look like when we've wired up this sensor according to the schematic that I've just shown you. You'll notice that we have the ground wire going from the ground connection that we had used for the other sensor as well. We've moved up one additional hole in the breadboard area here and we connect that to both of the ground wires on the sensor. Similarly, we've also connected the positive lead through the resistor. The, re the other end of the resistor we see is also hooked to this positive lead area. The same with the bottom resistor here as well that's hooked to the green wire. And then the green wire also connects to pin zero of the analog pins. You'll notice that I've also extended the gray connections here so that it shows that the positive lead is connected to not only the red wire of the proximity sensor, but also both of the right sides of the resistors here as well. And in the same fashion, the gray on the ground side shows that all of the ground wires are hooked together. Here is a close-up image that shows you the resistors and how they're hooked to the sensors on the left side and then to the positive lead on the right side and also you can see that the values of the resistors are uh, the 200 ohm resistor on the top and the 5.6 kilo ohm resistor on the bottom. Here's a close-up of my wiring of the phototransistor. You can see that I've, after I wired it I glued it onto the back of the stirring stick. I took some insulation from the wires and slid them over the bare wires on the phototransistor to protect them from one another. I hooked the two ground wires together. It's a little bit hard to see because of the shadow and so forth, but the two black wires I hooked together and then I soldered those to a black wire coming off of the phototransistor. Similarly, I slid some green insulation over one of the other wires and then soldered that to a green wire and the same thing with the yellow wire. And then I took a little bit of, uh, actually this is the plastic tubing that I clipped off of the antenna from the RC car and slid it over the solder joint to insulate the solder joint. You can do this and then you can slather a bunch of uh, hot glue on top of this to protect this, to keep it a little bit more rigid and then also to insulate it from anything else. And you can see it, I made kind of a mess of the glue, but it works pretty well as long as you keep the glue off of the sensor itself, off of the, the part of the sensor that senses the light and that projects the light. Here's an image of the final board with all its wiring combined. You'll see that we have the two sensors that we've already indicated. And then on the left over here, you'll see that we have the two DC motors that we've connected in the previous video. 
We also, in the top left corner here, we have the connectors for the servos. I haven't shown those just because it got a little too cluttered. And then down here on the bottom, you'll see that we have the three volt and a half batteries hooked in, as well as the nine volt battery over here on the bottom right. And so if you have all these connections, you ought to be good to go. This is what my wiring looked like when I was all done. Things are a little bit different than what I described here. I've got my resistors turned a little bit sideways from what I drew. But you can see that the drawing is a lot easier to follow. So you can stick with the drawing. I just wanted to show you this to show you that it actually does kind of come out pretty much like the drawing. So that does it for the sensor wiring. If you've been following along, your sensors are all ready to go. In fact, if you've been following through all the videos, all the wiring's done at this point and all the mechanical work is done. The only thing that we've left out at this point is where to put your servos and what you're going to do with them. There are a lot of different things you could do and I want to leave that to your own creativity. You could imagine using them to interact with other cars, for example, maybe in a battling mode. You might even choose to put your proximity sensor on one of the servos so you could point it in different directions and figure out what's around you. But that I can leave to you as a creative experiment of your own. One of the things that we did here is I've shown how to do all the wiring and now in the future videos we're going to talk about how to do the software. Ideally what you would do is do a little bit of wiring and then do some of the software to test the wiring, make sure that things are working before you get too far along. But it was a little bit easier to do the presentation in terms of showing all the wiring first and then going back and uh, showing how to do the software. So even though I presented it this way, please consider doing a little bit of wiring and then build a little bit of software to test it to make sure it works. Remember, if you've been watching these videos and it looks like fun and you'd like to follow along, you can get a kit with all the parts that you need, everything that we've talked about in here, and you can get that at swarmus.com. I look forward to the next video where we can dig into the software a little bit.